Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the test and assembly of push buttons and a selector switch. Now, detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca and links have been provided for all the different components that we'll be talking about uh, today in this video. So, looking up on the website, this is uh, we'll be actually looking at Fuji Electric 22mm uh, devices. These are the AR22 series and there are several different uh, uh, devices that we can actually uh, uh, look at. We have push buttons, illuminated push buttons, pilot lights, uh, e-stop push buttons, selector switches and buzzers. And the 22 uh, series just represents the hole diameter that we need in the panel to put the device into. So. Um, we will be looking at these illuminated push buttons and they everything that you see on these uh, buttons will actually uh, come apart and disassemble. So right from the uh, lens, legend plate, your plunger, your frame, your packing, your locking nut, the lamps, the lamp base, we have transformers, we have the terminal covers and we have contact blocks. And contact blocks can be ganged together, meaning they can be stacked together. Uh, and depending on the actual device, depends on how many we can actually gang together. So, and these turbo blocks come in two different varieties. We have a normally open. So that means that when no one's touching this uh, uh, device, the contact switch three and four, or terminal number three and four will be actually physically open. And that's what it looks like. And there's the plunger for it right there. We'll see this uh, in a bit. Then we have a normally closed, so if no one touches it, the contact, the numbers one and two, will actually be um, made so that you'll have um, a contact between those. So let's look at um, our actual hardware. And here we go. And the first thing we'll do is we will take a look at um, uh, our AR22 uh, FOL. 10E3GZA. We'll open this box here. And what we have is a green um, illuminated push button. And on the top here, what you'll see is a little switch or a little button. Hold that in and pull that out, and we can disassemble this uh, push button. You'll see my lamp right here. That'll illuminate. And you actually see that it is actually green inside. There's my contact block. This is uh, blue, so you'll see it's normally open. So what you'll notice on the back end, if I push this, um, you'll see the plunger going up. That plunger then will energize this contact switch um, right down inside here and actually turn those contacts. So we're looking like a, it's a mechanical um, way of looking at that, or mechanical push button. So let's just put that back together and it just pops in. You just line it up. There we go. And what we can do is just to test that out, we'll put our multimeter to an ohm reading so that when I put the probes together, it reads zero. So that means that I have a continuity. And when I open it up, it opens it up. And what we'll do is put this on our input, or on our terminal strip. So right now, I show that it's open. If I were to press the button, let's just, uh, there we go. And if we press the button, you can see that it goes to a zero. So basically we have, um, we open, we don't push the button, press the button. So you can see how that works. So it takes the physical um, pressure in order to uh, activate that contact. And what you also see is this transformer module here, and that is for the um, push button uh, illumination. So that's your LED lamp that will actually trigger when I uh, turn that on or apply voltage. So what we'll do is we'll actually take a look at our box and what we'll do is assemble a 
start stop and hand off auto um, selector switch into our box here. So let's just open that up. And there are three holes. And the first thing we'll do is take a, one of our legend plates. Right? And the legend plate itself, this one's my start. And what we'll do is put that on our first contact, our first hole. We'll open this up again. And you'll see that it'll actually mount that way. So what we'll do is we'll put this legend plate over the hole. We can put that through. And you'll see that it locks into the legend plate. And then on the back side, we will connect our unit. So just before we do that, what we actually need is to undo our locking washer. There we go. So let's put that through our legend plate first. Put that into our box. On the other side, we will put our locking on. There we go. And then we can add our contacts to the back of this unit. And we just have to get the orientation right. There we go. And you can hear it snap into place. So that is our start button. So next, if we look, we can see that we have uh, AR22 FOL 013 or E3RZA, which is our stop button. Once again, we have all of our, um, there's our contact block. In this case here, it's normally closed, so it's in red. And um, there's my um, unit for my LED light. So once again, let's take this apart. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's just test the operation. So again, our multimeter here is in ohms. And what we'll do is attach two of our probes here. And you'll see the first thing we'll do is it goes to um, zero. So, or four, representing the, um, the amount of resistance that we have on there. If we press the button, it now opens up. So again, normally, if we don't touch it, it is activated. If we press it, it opens up that circuit. So that is our stop button. So let's just uh, open that up like this. And then what we'll do is we will take a look at another legend plate. And this legend plate here will be our stop. So let's uh, locking nut. We'll put our stop on. Put that through our hole here. And tie this, or this back on, Turn it down, there we go, straighten it a little bit, and then what we can do is we can attach our contact block again on the back side. So now we have our start and stop ready to go. Uh, next, what we'll do is take a look at our AR22 uh, WR-322BZA. Now, this is a selector switch. And the selector switch, you'll see, has uh, we have two contact blocks on each side. Two normally open, two normally closed. And 
this represents a hand off auto switch so it's three position and if I were to take a look at um, right now we have it in the off position if you take a look at the contacts on my normally open side I do not have anything if I look at my contacts on my normally closed side again I do not have any connection so what we'll do is turn the switch to the left which is usually hand and when we look at our normally open contacts you can see now we don't we have a, a connection there and we look at our normally closed contacts and we do not have a connection there so when we go to hand we have our normally open contacts activated go back to neutral then we'll go to the auto now when we're auto if we look at our normally open we do not have a connection we look at our normally closed and we have a connection so for this particular switch what you see is we'll have um, when it's on hand where our contacts on our normally open will will activate when it's on neutral no contacts will activate when we're on auto our normally closed contact will activate so that's how our switch will work and if we just open that up you will see that the plunger is slightly different than our plunger in our push button and as it goes around it energizes and, and ensures that we get the correct operation and you can see the two plungers there there's no LED light on this one it's not illuminated and for this one we'll take a look at another legend plate here this is our hand off auto legends plate so the first thing we'll do is take that locking that off with our legend plate on and the legend plate actually has a little groove but you'll see right here that will actually uh, lock into place so it will not spin around on you. We can then put that through and we'll put our locking nut back on. Straighten that out a bit. And then we will snap our contact lock on. So now there's all three of our switches. And you can see here, now we have our start, our stop, and then our hand off auto. And this is my contact lock again, as we said before. And what we want to do is make sure, because you'll see that we have um, all of our contacts blocks here and the depth can be different depending on how many we actually add we have to ensure that our box can take that depth put that all together and there is our control pit box that we just uh, assembled so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button below if you have any questions about this video please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it if you want more information about us or you want to get two free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on a link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get the, uh, more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the little bell beside your subscription to actually get those notifications of the new video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.